Sveiki visi. Prisijungė. Teisė mūsų webinarų ciklą apie saugumo sprendimus, kas toliau kaip bernetinio saugumo srityje. Ir šiandien turim tokią, sakykime, egzotiškesnę temą apie kriptografiją, privačius raktus. Ir džiaugiuosi, kad susirinko žmonių tikrai daugiau netikėmės. Tai šiandien dienai galbūt daug kalbame apie slaptažodžių, slaptažodžių saugumą, bet labai dažnai pamirštame ir privačių raktų saugumą. Jo lab, kad sertifikatų ir su jais susijusių tarnybų iš tikrųjų yra daug ir rizikos yra didelės, tai yra pavogus privačius raktus gali būti tiek perimtas interneto svetainės ar reikybos komercijos portalo srautas, dešifruotas, pasiklausytas, pakeistas. Taip pat ir suvisdavimai galbūt gavim palyginti, kad visi laužėlis pavogęs laptažodį, gali jo naudotis 30 ar 60 dienų tiek, kiek jis galioja sertifikato privačių raktų vagystės atveju, kaip teisyklė, tie galiojama laikai yra ilgesni, metai, du, tai įsilažiulis gali turėti žymiai ilgesnę prieigą prie jūsų informacinių sistemų ar tinklaus rautų. Tai šiandien apie tai, kaip tas problemas spręsti, kokie saugumo sprendimai naudojami, tai papasakos Jaroslav Ulšiok apie aparatinius saugumo modulius, kas tai yra, kokie yra jūs keisai, kada jie yra reikalingi ir kokie saugumo problemas padėjo spręsti. So, Jaroslav, stage is yours. Switch on your mic. Yes, thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, this is the morning. Okay. My name is Jaroslav Uchok. I'm working for Thales, Thales Group. Uh, Thales is a big company, so I work for division, which is called this. Uh, we are um, focusing on the IT security. And today I would like to tell you something about the hardware security models, what the se hardware security model is uh, and why do we really need it, okay? Um, I encourage you to use chat window. We have a host. Thanks, by the way, thank you to... Uh, Blue Bridge for hosting this session, and we will uh, make uh, uh, the short stops to answer your question. If, if any comes to your mind during the, my presentation, please put it in the chat. Okay, um, short agenda for today. Yes, as I said, what is an HSM? I try to explain you why do we need it. Uh, of course, because we talk about Thales, so I will present you our two flagship uh, HSM, one is Luna 7 and Depot. Depot is something special, <laughs> not, not exactly HSM. Uh, yeah, I try to explain why do we really need it based on the, some use cases, okay? Um, at the end, short demo, 15 minutes. And the Q&A. Q&A will be just in the middle. We, we will not spend the, uh, the, the dedicated session at the end for this. Just make a stops to, to answer your questions. So again, I encourage you to use chat to put questions. Okay, uh, we live in a very interesting uh, time. Our businesses are, tra transform are transforming now and optimizing. Uh, all we are in the digital transformation area. Many companies changing their environments, optimizing, implementing faster and frequently uh, changing to the digital technologies, right? Uh, of course, this, uh, uh, and of course, this um, approach is accelerated by pandemic time we are in now, right? Hopefully you are well, or you are well. Um, yeah, and this process also create new risk, right? Um, this, this landscape creates new risks and hackers uh, can utilize uh, more area to exploit, to break into our systems. Yeah, we, we are a little bit in rush, I would say, uh, implementing our journey to the cloud, uh, implementing remote workers, implementing home office workers, and so on and so on. Um, our recent uh, data uh, threat reports, we, we perform this report every year. Uh, during this uh, 
to, to produce this report, we interview some enterprises and we ask them, hey, company, um, do you believe that your digital transformation initiative you have in your, in your company are secure? Okay. And 60, over 60% 60 of the companies said that, yeah, we, we feel, we believe that uh, um, our transformation initiative are secure or very secure. Okay. And in the same interview, we asked them, okay, guys, do you, do you use uh, an encryption for data protection? And only 30% answered yes we use it okay so as you can see there is a big difference between what they really think and what they really do so uh, uh yeah we believe that the belief that, <laughs> that you are safe is not a strategy for protecting your data okay so what to do to protect data of your organization in general right in, at Thales, we believe there are three distinguished pillars first Entry your data because this is the one proof method of protecting data. No firewalls, no antivirus, not the backup, encryption the data. Okay, this is the proof technology to protect the data. Second, manage the keys, which of course encrypt the data and protect these keys because this really small amount of data, for example, AS256 is 256 bits only, can protect two terabytes. No, no, no problem, right? So protect those keys. And the third pillar is control access to those keys, to do your application, to your system. So yeah, very uh, famous uh, buzzword recently, uh, zero trust, right? This is, by the way, this is not the, the new term. This is well known from the Asian, I remember from my studies and was most related to the network now. Uh, this term is extended to the, the whole system. Yeah? Zero trust, so don't trust anybody, even if it's on-prem, in my network, authenticate everywhere, control access everywhere. Okay, uh, so encryption as the method of protecting data is not enough, okay? The most important is to protect keys which are used to encrypt the data. We believe at Thales that the encryption is a kind of digital cement for uh, proving uh, ability to exchange the data. Nowadays, you use encryption everywhere. Every single mobile phone call brings encryption to encrypt your transmission, okay? If you use your credit card, again, encryption to encrypt your PIN, your transaction, and so on, and so on, and so on, yeah. So, properly implemented protection for the encryption key, uh, proves that this uh, concrete, this, this cement is really solid, right? We, we do not have cracks on it and, and yeah, find the, the hole where we can break into the, the system and find the data. Uh, companies are responsible how they protect encryption keys, okay? Keys could be in software or in hardware. Of course, in the software, this is the proof by mathematicians, by yeah, hackers, that keys in keep in software are not safe. Especially today, when you have uh, visualization and it's easy to dump memory of the server, of the processes, of the application, and find the key. Yeah? So keys in software are not safe. Only hardware can bring you the uh, proper protection level for your encryption keys, the most important asset you should protect. Uh, and the solution for this are the hardware security modules. Yeah, they were developed 20, 25 years ago. Uh, the first implementation was, of course, for, for financial sector, for banks. What is the purpose of, of HSM? The main purpose of HSM is to decouple keys from the data. Please never, never store data, data encrypted with the key, uh, encrypted data with that key which encrypts the data at the same place, in the same location. This is absolutely wrong um, way to protect your stuff. So use HSM as much as possible. In a nutshell, what is an HSM? I do not want to bother you with, with all the technical de details. Of course, if you want to, to find any technical details, just you have a 
Blue Bridge, you have contact to me, just call me or send me an email. We can make a dedicated session for this. In a nutshell, HSM is a secure container for most vital data, for example, encryption key. We can put here any blocks if you want, but mostly HSM plays with encryption key, symmetric and asymmetric key as well. What is also important, this is the big differentiator if you compare HSM to smart card, for example. Smart card is also recognized as a small HSM, okay? I'm, I'm talking about the smart card with the crypto processor on it, which performs some, some encryption uh, function. HSM accelerates cryptographic operation, encryption, decrypt, encryption, decryption, signing, hashing, and so on, so on. Thousand operations per second is not the big achievement by HSM. For smart cards, one to operation average, maybe. Uh, second, very important uh, feature, uh, HSM is able to securely generate uh, random numbers, okay? This is the very important feature. One of the methods to attack a uh, crypto system is to, of course, we can check all the keys or find the key, right? But the one of them is to predict the key, okay? If your random number generator is weak and I see the sequence or I can recognize the sequence, I can predict what the encryption key would be. So, and yeah, all the HSMs has to pass um, specific certification in order to be recognized at the, at the industry HSM. This is very important. And yeah, Signum Temporis uh, provides a clear audit trials for um, usage of crypto materials. This is, of course, important, especially in the, for example, finance sector. When you make a transaction, the uh, who did the transaction, with what, what key, at what time is very important if transaction is, for example, valid or not, okay? There are the common features. Most of the HSM, uh, as you can see on the left-hand side, oh, sorry, on the right-hand side, there are in form of uh, network appliance, it would be a, a PCI card to install in, inside the server casing or USB attached device as well. Okay, many, many factors. And all above uh, um, feature capabilities are proved with industry standards, okay? The most recognizable uh, certification are, of course, FIPS, provided by NIST, this is the American um, standardization um, body, and by uh, ANSI, uh, which is common criteria, of course. This is more um, related to Europe, uh, Zoom, European Union Zoom. Uh, HSM is usually, usually delivered with wide range of SDEX toolkits in order to allow flexible integration with the application. HSM, always is integrated with application. It's, it is it's itself, it's nothing, yeah? Just hit the air, that's, that's all he can do. Always integrated with the application. And uh, last but not least, the feature, which is uh, frequently asked by the past customers, is the functionality model. Function model functionality, functionality model is the uh, module inside the HSM, inside the hardware, where you can load and run your dedicated code, which can play with the keys inside the HSM. If you have very crucial part of your uh, code software, you can run it inside the HSM, okay? This is the functionality model, and you can, these features, you can find among all the vendors providing HSM. This is, I would say, Vendor independent. These are the vendor independent features. Okay, so what's an uh, HSM in a nutshell? How it works? The most uh, common deployment is HSM as a network appliance because it's more flexible, more versatile. Uh, many applications, many servers can connect over the network and utilize HSM capabilities. Okay, thanks to the um, thanks to the um, um, industry standards like PKC11, Java, CAPI, or CNG, Cryptography Next Generation, developed by Microsoft, uh, 
application can call any kind of HSM you have in your environment. Yeah, that's the. This provides some kind of um, standard which uh, allows me to produce the application and then take from the market any kind of HSM and should work. Of course, any uh, every uh, vendor adds to the specification some extension, right? If you start using extension, of course, the the probability is less possible. Um, what is important? All the key operation, encryption, decryption, signing, verification are done inside the HSM. Client, which works as application, only requests the operation, okay? Sign for me, decrypt for me, uh, I don't know, encrypt. Keys, key, never leave HSM, okay? Uh, of course, with network HSM, it's easy to uh, achieve load balancing and high availability. It's really easy. Uh, uh, in particular, when you have virtual environment, okay? You can virtual your servers, your application, use, for example, VMware vMotion, move to the spare units or to the um, disaster recovery data center, and keeping the network access, you still can use your high availability modules uh, from one data center. So it's really, really flexible, and from the Technical point of view, because I'm an engineer, I would say that most of the deployments are based on the network HSM. Of course, we have, we have, uh, or exist uh, HSM uh, in form of PCI card. You can put it in the server or USB attached, another kind. And for this approach, only application running on the server can utilize uh, HSM. It's uh, mm, dedicated. This approach is dedicated to, to for example, root uh, CAs, the, the um, system which are utilized. Um, uh, they are not very much utilized. Okay, and approach is exactly the same. Application calls the um, application program interface, and all operations are done inside the HSM. Uh, now I'd like to tell you something about our flagship model. Uh, Thales has a wide range of uh, HSM from payment HSM to uh, program, uh, programmable HSM up to the general purpose HSM. Our flagship model of the general purpose HSM is SafeNet Luna 7. Uh, you can find it in form of network appliance, PCI card if you like, and soon there will be a uh, USB attached device. There is the, the right picture here because uh, we are finishing our certification development of this, of this new uh, HSM. Uh, what's inside? We designed this uh, HSM from the scratch. We have 20, more than 25 years experience in, in doing this. Uh, Luna 7 contains chip level protect protection against channel attacks. We uh, include many um, checking of the environment. Yeah? We check the time, sound, heat, radiation, light, and power consumption in order to avoid um, ch side channel attacks, right? This is the, that's why we need hardware. You can't achieve this in the software, for example. Okay. Of course, the casing is uh, also protected with serial tamper evidence stickers. Uh, there, are, um, there is a special design of the casing where to prevent um, probing, inside probing, um, fans, which are replaceable, as well as uh, power supplies, has a special base which uh, does not allow um, internal probing of the device. Of course, with this uh, hardware protections. We have also software protection inside the, the, the HSM, um, which we'll talk to you about later. Uh, all these features, if you don't believe us, yeah, Thales is claiming that, yeah, our device is secure. You should follow certification because uh, the authorizations body like NIST or um, ANSI, they, uh, we, apply for the certification. And Luna 7 achieved FIPS 100-2, 140-2 level 3. 
Um, and uh, oh, excuse me. And we also apply for the FIPS 100-3. After 20 years, NIST decided to upgrade the, the FIPS certification for HSM and smart cards. And this release is uh, number three. And we also apply for this uh, certification. Now current state of uh, certification Luna 7 is in the finalizing stage. So we should get it before end of, of course, here's the error here, not end of the year 2020, but 2021, of course. And what is important for us, for European Zoom, is common criteria. Uh, late 2020, we achieved uh, ADA certification, so Luna 7 can be used a qualified signature device. Okay, this is very important. Uh, signature device hosted by the customer, but by the end user of this uh, qualified signature. This is very important because we had the ADA certification in the past, which tells that the QSCD should be kept by um, QCA, so certified, certificate, uh, qualified certificate authority. Now uh, we pass the necessary common criteria certification, this to provide here, and um, customer can buy Luna 7 and go to the qualified certificate authority and request, for example, qualified seal. Okay, this is very common now due to um, digital transformation. Many companies send uh, documents in the electronic form, sign it by the seal. Yeah, seal is for company, certificate is for person, uh, sign it by the seal. And this seal can be kept inside or, or could be issued on the Luna 7. Yeah, this is the certification. You don't believe us, go to the certification, check the... Uh, protection profile, what was checked and what is needed to achieve this certification, needed in the in terms of configuration of the HSM. I do not want to bother you with the all details about Luna 7, just a couple outstanding features which are important to uh, for you to know which uh, HSM applies for my needs. Okay, so first of all is the authentication. We have two kinds of authentication. One is a, a password base where all administrative functions are done on the password. Password means long alphanumeric string, two, five, four characters. So it could be really, really complicated. Or if you need dual control, uh, quorum to admin the, your HSM, for example, you keep uh, root CA or very important uh, stuff here, then we offer you pet authenticate, pet based uh, uh, HSM, where we utilize pet keys, which is the second factor for authenticate the user, and USB, uh, sorry, uh, the pet, which is pin entry, the distance for pin entry device, which is necessary to enter the pin as well as the pet key uh, content to the HSM in order to authenticate uh, user. This one is uh, a bit more complex in the deployment. This, this one uh, password base is uh, much easier. Both have the same certification, FIPS and common criteria. So customer can decide which one is more, more um, needed for them. For them. Of course, after the, the security, um, if the security team says, okay, we need two factor, go with pet, if password is enough, Go with password. The second one feature we have is partitions. Partitions is simply uh, the way you can divide HSM into independent containers dedicated for application. For example, I can divide this uh, device into four and dedicate one container with one set of the users who match those keys, for example, for root PKI. Second one could be for core signing, yeah? Probably there are different team in your company which manage PKI and manage code signing. For example, uh, key manager or database protection. 
could be another example of the team. You can hold here uh, web server keys as well for uh, SSL offloading and so on. So, so partitions is the quite nice feature which uh, helps us to um, divide keys into sets managed by use and, uh, by different applications and managed by a different set of people. Uh, high availability. Yeah, this is yeah commodity. Uh, all the HSMs on the market supports high availability and low balance. It's not, however, I'm a technician, so I would say that um, uh, load balancing and high availability uh, implemented in Luna is really excellent. And we can achieve, uh, for example, this scenario where you have the, your workloads here in data center. They do heavy stuff. And in distance data center, you have disaster recovery unit, which constantly back up the content from this one. If your workload dies, the disaster recovery unit can take um, his job and, and serve for application. Very, very um, good mechanism. I can recommend it as a, as a technician. Of course, backup, yeah. HSM, we can't, we have to have uh, ability to backup. In Stales, we said, okay, backup from hardware to hardware. If keys should be in the hardware, so backup uh, on the hardware as well. We have a dedicated device, which looks exactly like uh, Luna USB attached because it's exactly the same hardware, however, different purpose, right? This is the dedicated backup HSM. Uh, it also achieved uh, FIPS level three certification. This is important, of course. This is the USB attached very, yeah, like uh, size of the smartphone, I would say. So quite modern and easy to move to, to for example, um, pass to the distant server or distant location for off uh, off-site um, backup. Let's summarize what we have. Luna 7 HSM are in two different kinds. Luna A, which is, which is password authentication, and Luna S, which is pet authentication. In each family, you have three models. Entry model with basic memory, which yeah, um, in, in which you can keep your um, encryption keys and the size of the partition. Here is the five. Five is suitable for most of the deployment. However, if you have, uh, if you need more, we have Luna A750, which um, can be extended to up to 20 partitions. The highest model can be extended up to 100. This is designed for the service providers or big enterprises. However, yeah, Anyone can buy the, the Luna 7 and 90 with 100 partition, no problem. Okay. Uh, here you see the basic performance. As I said, Luna 7 uh, hundred uh, has this performance level. For example, RSA 2 kilo, we can achieve 1000 signing per second. This is important to add that it is 1000 uh, signing per second. Okay while the highest model can achieve 10,000 signing per second. So, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, if uh, you still struggle with the performance, you need more than 10,000, you can build high availability because the high availability group increase the performance nearly linear. So if you put two devices of 10,000 signing, in total you get uh, 20,000 signing per second for LSC. Is it is it doable? Okay. Uh, what uh, else do we have? As I said, I will want. Uh, I do not want to uh, bother you with all the technical details, but a couple of them are, I'd like to um, outline uh, just to see what, just to tell you what you how you can achieve this HSM this this, this new function and your environment. One is the key uh, scalable key storage SKS. Okay, um, yeah, we store in normal circumstances we store uh, keys in this memory. Two megabytes of memory. It's not big, but yeah, you can keep up to thousand keys 
in, this is enough for most cases. But sometimes, for example, for remote signing, for, uh, I don't know, IoT, you need to keep thousands of thousands of keys, million keys, of course. So the limit of memory is, is a really a limit. SKS allows you to store keys encrypted as a blob with key which is kept inside the HSM. This key never leave the HSM. You can backup on the, on the backup HSM if you like. But these blobs are encrypted by this, by this key which is kept inside, which is, uh, this key is called SMK. And you can store it whenever you want. This key encrypted is uh, exported as a blob by another large object and you put it in a file, in a database. You, meaning application, is responsible for managing these blobs. If you need to use it, you just load it, decrypt and get the handler to the key and yeah, do whatever you want. Um, this is the um, capability which allows it to break the limit of the internal memory of the HSM. Another one is PKA, PKA, not PKI, but PKA, per key authorization. This is also important. We introduced new mechanisms where application, because in normal circumstances, the authorization is per partition or per slot, if you like. Okay? So uh, if you authenticate against the slot, the partition, then uh, you have access to all the keys which, for example, for remote signing is not okay, right? So we introduced a new mechanism, which is called per key authorization, and uh, application can access the partition where many, many, many keys uh, resides. And if you need to use it, you have to provide some uh, authorization. We support currently three mechanisms, no authorization, password, and PET, okay? So, uh, and what is important, the authorization checking is inside the HSM. So apps provide the credentials and checking is done inside the HSM. This is very important, okay? Those two features, PKI, PKA and SKS are introduced uh, to allow partners, integrators um, to build the, uh, to, to make it easy to build a uh, remote signing solution, especially for ADAS and uh, similar solutions. Okay, this is PKI. Functional model, I told you already about this. This is the special memory where you can load the code and run. This code uh, can be run inside the HSM and may have access to all the keys. Depending on the settings, you may get some limits or unlimited access to the keys. The purpose is to build the custom code, which is crucial, for example, pin re-encryption, or um, if we talk about ADAS, this some module can be developed and loaded into uh, uh, FM modules. And for this, it's much easier to achieve, for example, ADAS certification for remote signing solutions. Um, another, purpose of uh, functionality could be, um, yeah, some preparation for the future, okay? We think about the future, probably you heard about the quantum computers, quantum cryptography. Yes, the famous guys, uh, uh, Shore and Mr. Groves, they prove that when we build functional quantum computer, all asymmetrics um, cryptography we know now, RSA or ecliptic curve, can be broke because the key strength um, for quantum algorithm is zero. So we can easily uh, solve this mathematical problem which is behind this crypto system and find the key. Yeah. So as you can see, regardless of the key size, the crypto power against the short algorithm is zero. Yeah, so, but first of all, we have to have working, stable quantum computer. Um, sooner or later, it will be developed. This is my feeling. Uh, for symmetric key, uh, groups prove that uh, it decreased the key size, uh, sorry, the crypto power of the, of the certain algorithm by half. Okay, so for IS128, when the computer, uh, quantum computer will be developed, it will 
de facto will be of power AS64, still big number. 256 is would be 128, okay? So if you think about something, what should be protected in 20, 30, maybe 50 years, just enter with AS256. If they develop quantum computer, you will still be on the safe position because they only decrease the all available, all keys which are need to be checked to half. That's it, okay? But yeah, we need to start thinking about the quantum area right now, okay? Because probably we need the data encrypted right now, which will be still safe in 30, 50 years. So we cooperate with a company called Isara. They develop um, some algorithms, some uh, cryptography, which is quantum resistant. And having this in the functionality model, you may have the keys, uh, which are uh, quantum resistant. Okay, this is the future the special use. Um, yeah. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I see in the chat we have, because we uh, now start to summarize. Hello. What are your products differences, benefits, comparison to other HSM imprint, for example, UT Mac? Uh, <laughs> okay, this is not the right session to, to compare uh, with, with uh, vendors. Yeah, in, as I said, in uh, common functions, all the HSM of all vendors are the same. If, of course, devil is in the details. If you go into details, you see, of course, how load balancing works, for example, uh, how many keys you can store in, inside the HSM uh, performance, okay? So these details are uh, very important. You start choosing your HSM for particular purpose, okay? Um, yeah, our main competitor, of course, is UTMACO, is Entrust, formerly Encypher, right? Uh, this, this line of product was inside the HS in Thales. Now, uh, since 2019, it's uh, sold out to the external company. Uh, yeah, Luna continuously evolving to meet new technology needs. Of course, this is the commodity, code signing, cloud adoption, PKI, TLS offloading, TLS SLS offloading, or database and period. However, we still improve uh, our solution to follow, for example, quantum computing, IoT, uh, PKI, uh, 5G, new uh, GSM network requests, new algorithms to protect uh, GSM traffic, bring your own key or blockchain. Yeah, These new technologies uh, we try to support in our HSM and of course more probably sooner or later the new technologies will appear and regarding the cryptography and it will support them as well. Yeah, Luna is the foundation of digi digital mm, trust, could be the foundation and should be the <laughs> foundation of digital, digital, digital trust in your environment. We believe that keys should be always in harbor, yeah? with the exception for SKS, of course. Uh, strong security architecture with 25 years of experience. Um, meet the compliance. Thanks to the certifications, we achieve easy to meet the compliance for PCI DSS, for FIBS, for ADAS, for example. Um, yeah, thanks to the um, uh, authentication methods, partitions, and the fact that you can distinguish between people who manage the keys and own the keys you may always keep the key ownership for your customers. Um, superior performance, yeah, we can achieve from 1,000 to 10,000 and build more if you need uh, by building high availability. Um, simple management, monitoring, this is also important. We support, of course, well-known techniques like syslog, SNMP, uh, we support the REST API for configuring the HSM, maybe important for, for some customers. And we support a hybrid multi-cloud HSM um, concept. I will tell you something about later. Yeah, we support many, many, many integrations. Well-known, PKI, TLS, code signing, database encryption, of course, cloud. Uh, you see what vendors do we support. This is 
these are well-known integration, okay? Proven integration, you can find integration done on our website. Also, we support modern technologies like PKR for IoT, for example. ADAS, two companies, Cryptomatics and Assertia, already now, they develop the, uh, some modules for remote signing. You can load it into the, the, the Luna. Uh, we support blockchain, Hyperledger, Ripple, no problem. Post quantum, if you think about cryptography, which will be resistant to the uh, quantum uh, computer, um, call us. We have a cooperation with Cicera. We can provide you something which yeah, can help you in the future. And of course, new technologies, 5G4. We have proven more than 440, maybe now number is not exact. Uh, proven integration with uh, our HSM solutions. Uh, now I'd like to tell you something about the data protection on demand. This is the service, and one of the service is uh, our cloud HSM. Okay. Nowadays, during the um, uh, digital transformation, uh, many companies go to home office, uh, I know companies which are fully uh, implemented in cloud. Yeah? So I tell them, okay, take the HSM, the hardware component, and put in your data center. They said, oops, we do not have server room. We do not have data center. We are in the cloud. Okay. So what to do? Uh, you can use this HSM as service. This is fully cloud-based HSM platform designed and developed by us. This is cloud agnostic, we do not rely on a commercial cloud provider like AWS, GCP, or Azure. Um, we provide on-demand wide range HSM integrations. Okay, uh, You can find it on the online marketplace. No need to invest on any hardware or VPN access on your site. This is very, very, very easy to deploy and implement. Yeah, what do you, how this looks like? Yeah, of course, this is the, the service. It looks like uh, we have tails, we call it tails. This is the single service you can subscribe, okay? Uh, the service is divided into two, three actually uh, parts. One is HSM on demand, and second is key management service. This is another very important part of the cryptography, key management, okay? Protecting the key in the HSM, that's one, key management is second. So if you, if you talk about the HSM as a, as a service, we should look at these tails. Uh, from the technical point of view, there is no difference between these tails. You receive just access to the single partition, to the single PKC slab and slot. However, on the tails, you just receive the dedicated um, description how to integrate. This is really, really nice uh, design that describes how to integrate, for example, with CyberArk, with Microsoft CA, and so on and so on. For key management, we also have some options here, even for payment. This service is growing because we see more and more demand for cloud HSM solutions. Okay. What do you receive when you subscribe a tile? One HSM service, as I said, this is the access to one TKC slot uh, with password authentication. However, we think about running uh, another kind of this service with pet authentication, so two-factor authentication. You can store up to 100 keys of any kind, okay? This is the limitation. And you achieve, what about performance? You achieve 100 transactions, sorry, uh, signing per seconds based on the RSA 2 kilo. Okay, somebody can tell, oh, this is not much. Okay, if you compare to, to Luna 7, 10,000, for example. But believe me, it is enough for most use cases. 100 TPS is when you do the signing for the document once a day, 100 per second is enough. Five install instances. So one tail, for example, Microsoft CA can be invoked can be called by five instances of your servers okay so easy to achieve for example uh, redundancy and by default we provide high availability on the service level okay 
Data center locations, we have two common. One is located in the near to Frankfurt to serve the European uh, Union zone. One is located in uh, Dallas. And both uh, got back up to the um, Ottawa in Canada. What is important for European customers, the cloud art from US does not apply to those two data centers. Okay, so if uh, Mr. Biden comes and says, okay, give me data of this customer from um, U European Union, uh, they will not provide this data because Cloud Act, cloud act does not apply here. Um, Depot, Depot as a service uh, got some certification. We passed the PCI, DSS and ISO. Uh, also, we have a SOC for management and the infrastructure is built on the um, CryptoVisor 7, which is exactly the same module we use inside the Luna 7, which and this model achieve, of course, FIPS level, uh, FIPS 140, Dash two level three certification. Who has access to keys in, if, if I subscribe the, the, the depot? No service provider, no Equinix. We, we host the service in Equinix data center. No Thales, no tenant. Tenant because we support multi tenancy. So you may be the service provider of the HSM to your customers if you like. Okay, so you will be tenant. Uh, no application owner. Application owner is the guy who is the admin of the, let's say, HSM. Only crypto user or, or crypto officer. What's the difference? Crypto officer have, has full right on the key, can create, delete, use. Crypto user can only use the key. Typical um, user for application. Application should use the key and not delete them. Or with this, when it's a special uh, purpose, yes, you can use uh, crypto officer. So only customer of the uh, service has access to these keys. High availability is by default. So you do not have to implement uh, high availability on your site. What is important, you should only um, make your uh, internet connection really reliable. Okay? Um, you may, uh, thanks to the depot, you may achieve hybrid, hybrid architecture. What, what I mean by this? Your application can talk to the local HSM and th at the same time have has uh, load balancing to the depot service, right? If your HSM dies, you still keep your service up and running because you can call depot, hybrid architecture, okay? So in this case, of course, you may achieve more performance here, less, but still with degraded performance, you can keep your service up and running. On-premise backup. You may use Depot service and backup the service locally. Okay, uh, this is important because some customers don't believe us and like to have uh, uh, off-site backup. Another approach is you can backup your local system to the cloud. For example, uh, you would like to be uh, you would like to have a distant backup, not not in your country, somewhere else. You can still utilize local Luna with your keys and do the backup to the cloud. Okay. So many, many possible uh, scenarios, architecture, when you combine Lunas and Depot or Depot itself, if you like. No HSM, be warned. Why do we really need this HSM? Uh, I'm doing similar um, um, webinars many, many times and always recommend to the customers, to the partners, okay, keep your keys inside the HSM, keep your keys inside the HSM. Now, after solar, solar wind hacks, probably you are familiar with or you at least heard about this, uh, I have a proof <laughs> because I do not want to bother you with details, mm, but uh, one important thing is how the hackers infiltrate the, the network and what they achieve. Uh, they break into the network with high privileges because of the um, SolarWinds um, application works with such kind of privileges, okay? And they were in this particular attack for one company, they were able to achieve, to gain access to the protected data 
uh, on in the Active Directory Federated Service. They were able to take encryption keys, which reside on the file system, and generate the uh, some token and authenticate to the external services without two-factor authentication. Okay, auto two-factor authentication was implemented here, but those guys were able to uh, bypass this uh, because they found the encryption key on the, on the file system. That's the proof. Of course, I don't like sol uh, SolarWind attack. Yeah, I do not recommend this. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this is the proof why, guys, you did not put this uh, ADFS uh, uh, encryption keys inside the HSM. Of course, maybe they can achieve this key, that they reach these keys as well, but it brings the higher level of, of uh, complexity. Yeah, The more you are in the network, probably you will be detected. Yeah? So another layer of complexity, another obstacle for uh, hackers. Microsoft and NSA officially recommends deploying ADFS uh, after the uh, deploying the, 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 the ADFS uh, with HSMs. Right? You can find this on the on the, our blog or in the internet. Use cases. Yeah, we have ten minutes left, so quickly. Of course, the common one: PKI database encryption, SSL, and code signing. Couple examples. The commodity is, of course, PTI, when this is recommended by vendor to store um, all certificate authorities keys inside the HSM. Database encryption, this is native database encryption provided by Oracle or Microsoft. They utilize table space key, which is managed by database engine. However, those keys are encrypted by the key which resides inside the HSM. If somebody steals your database, this guy has no access to this key. Okay? Of course, when database engine works, it decrypts the table space key and decrypt the, the records table space on the fly. Smart meeting, another one. Yeah, uh, This is PKI for IoT, I would say. CyberArk, uh, example of uh, privileged access management solution. This kind of solutions Keep your all credential, very, very important credentials for root, administrator, supervisor, or whatever, in the key vault. Yeah. Passwords are stored here. Of course, this vault is protected with encryption, right? And for example, uh, CyberArk has very nice integration with our Luna. One command generates the, this kind of encryption keys, which protects the whole structure of the keys protecting all the safe and, and uh, um, uh, credentials inside the vault, right? SSS uploading, new generation modern firewalls which terminate SSL traffic can uh, uh, decrypt, terminate the SSL traffic and investigate uh, uh, what is inside. But all these vendors do not want to uh, be an HSM to store private key for your uh, SSL certificate. Yeah, that's why they utilize external HSM like this one example. This is taken from Palo Alto, and you have direct integration with our Luna system here. Code signing. Yeah, nowadays you can't upload any piece of code to App Store. Google Play or run in Microsoft in Windows 10 if code is not signed. Okay, yeah, I can take the certificate, put my uh, encryption key on the file system. Fine, but believe me, there are um, very demanding um, companies which say, "Oh no, no, no! You have to put your encryption key for code signing inside the HSM." This is the example of. Uh, excuse me. This one example of the Texas Instrument uh, CPU, which is commonly used uh, for card au car audio system in your car. Now, radio radio in your in your car is the sophisticated computer right now. Yeah, and in most cases, Texas Instrument is used here, and it mm, utilizes key ring. Okay, you can't run any code in this card audio system, which controls your car 
if it's not signed, okay? And I have a nice case, use case, where company um, requested us to allow the, or help them to move the key from the file system to the HSM we integrate with the code signing uh, system. Code signing. And last but not least is double key encryption. This is very um, um, recently um, very important integration. Uh, Microsoft uh, abandoned his uh, or modernized his approach, host your own key to double key encryption. Okay. Uh, the method is you host two keys. One, if you want to access data which is stored in Office 365, you have to have two keys. One is held by the provider, by Microsoft in Azure. The second is provided by a um, customer. So architecture will look like this. This is in the cloud, in Azure, and this is on your um, on-premise, okay? Windows desktop, you have to have protection client, MIP, Office, uh, Office 365, 365, and you have to deploy Luna Key Broker Service. This is our product, which is integrated with Luna. Based on this, you can achieve double key encryption. One piece of keys held by Microsoft when you access the, the document, decrypts the data, and the final decryption is made on uh, your desktop system. And this key is kept inside the HSM, never exposed to the provider to the Azure. Okay. Uh, I see that we are run of the time. So uh, yeah, this is example how this looks like. When you have access and open the document, you can see your sensitive data. If you do not have access, sorry, Word, local Word cannot open the document. Okay. And you can um, tune what rights you have to, to, to the particular document in Office 365. For example, this one can only view and modify and run code Visual Basic inside the document. We have, as I said, we have very large um, ecosystem for integration with Luna, with our HSM. So yeah, please check out our website or call uh, partner. Thank you very much, demo time. Uh, test use question. Do we have some time for um, quick I demo or no. not? I see yes. that no one left still of attendees, so let's use the Thank you. <laughs> sweet part okay. demo. demo time. I see only one question. Um, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to encourage you again. If any questions, just... Yes, if you have any questions, ask, but... Uh, yeah, I, yeah as, as I said... Very clear yeah. and understood. Yeah, it will be so. delivered afterwards. Yeah, uh, as I said, I can't do comparison of, uh, yeah, but as I said, look at the details. This is very important. In general, all the systems does the same, but uh, devil is in the details. Yeah, we have the same in Poland. Devil is in the details. Okay, demo time. So uh, let me stop the presentation and bring my virtual machine. Quick demo, just show how this looks like. Um, let me, yeah, first of all, I would like to, because I'm at the home office, I will show you how default looks like HSM as a cloud, because <laughs> this is very convenient for me. So, uh, maybe I log into default, show you how the management interface look like, because, uh, uh, the, the access is, yeah. Not very fancy. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, two-factor authentication. So I have to put my code here. Just give me a second. This is the management interface. So tenant A C two verify incorrect. Ah, oh, wrong. Sorry. Ah, oh, changed. It's time based. One, three, eight. This is the how the subscribe but account looks like. Okay, this is my IAM application owner. Simply, I'm the admin. Okay, uh, we have a bunch of the services. As I said, in the in the Luna client HSM, uh, sorry, cloud HSM, you have this ready for use 
more info. For example, let's say, oops, yeah, time up. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, we have description how we should, what we should do to integrate Microsoft CA. Very detailed documentation, how to start, what is supporting, and so on, so on. This is what you get when you subscribe the service. This is the, uh, the, the these are the tales for um, HSM. Luna backup, only backup from the on-premise. Uh, we have special um, HSM for key export, and so on. Here is the cipher management, key management services, and third-party integration. As you can see, this part is growing more and more services integrated with us, which is nice. Here are my services. I already made some services. I created based on this one. Okay. So uh, here is my uh, CyberArk, for example, integration. I downloaded or created two clients, as you can remember, up to five is supported. And I can create the credential to call the service via, via REST API to manage, okay? This is useful for customers who want to, for example, integrate this uh, with their own management system. This is the management, okay, leave it. This is how it looks like inside um, my server. Simply, when you subscribe the service and want to connect to HSM, you simply download one zip file. You have to extract the zip file, you get more or less this content, okay? You have two zips inside, one is dedicated for Windows, the tar, as you can imagine, is dedicated for Linux uh, operating system. So, unzip, no install, you have to run one simple batch to um, set up some uh, envir environmental variables. One is, is crystal, it is one, which should point where uh, necessary library exists. This is all what this um, patch does. And that's it, that's it. No more installation, very, very easy. Then you have to, Luna CM, then you have to, Luna CM is our um, command line interface tool to manage the, the uh, HSM. You can initialize the partition, create crypto officer, crypt, uh, crypto user, and so on, so on. Yeah, it takes a while because I'm on the Wi-Fi, but oh, me. This one. yeah, you see, I have uh, access to the regular PKC11 partition, which is called uh, slot, sorry, which is called P01 CyberArk, yeah, because I have integrations. As you can see, there is a CyberArk server here. Uh, CryptoVisor 7 tells me that this is CryptoVisor from the depot, firmware, and so on, so on. What I can do, I can, for example, log in using this tool to this uh, slot. Uh, so, um, um, role login minus name, crypto officer. I will log in as a crypto officer. Okay, I need to provide the password because Depot is a password-based uh, HSM, okay? And what, what, what I can do? I can, for example, par is abbreviation from partition content. I can see what's on the partition. And if I'm not mistaken, I should see one symmetric key, uh, which was, which is uh, already in, um, uh, generated by CyberArk, which is here. We have database. This is the main configuration file of CyberArk. Uh, as you can see, here is the, um, here is the, oh, here. Um, oh yeah, here. Here is the, these two things are necessary to integrate CyberArk with HSM. Okay. On-premise or in the cloud, doesn't matter. You have to point to the DLL library, which implements PKC 11 and here modify uh, CyberArk firewall to allow outgoing traffic. This, this IP is uh, IP of default service. And of course we use SSL for this connection. 
That's that's all what is necessary from the cyber arc. And of course, one command which generates encryption key on the HSM. Okay, this is what is inside and look at the cyber arc server. Okay, nice. I can stop it. Yeah. So I shut down the uh, cyber arc vault. As you can remember from my presentation, this is the this is that service responsible for hosting this. Okay. So if I disable access to the HSM, vault won't be available. Okay, so let's try it. Okay, firewall close all the telemetry pressure. So now CyberArk is stopped. Terminated. Okay, wait for that. Cool. Uh, let's make an error. For example, I will disable network here because this is the easiest way <laughs> how to make uh, uh, the, the rest of the HSM unavailable. Yeah, just disable. In normal switch circumstances, I unplug the, the network cable. Here we, not, we are in, in my uh, virtual network. So, okay, if we start, try to start CyberArk server now, it should fail because cannot access the uh, uh, main encryption key uh, from the HSM, okay? Oh yeah, it takes time before we get the error. It's, this is normal because we have to wait for the network timeout and that's it. And exactly the same method we can utilize to integrate with Microsoft CA because we got the slot with the uh, transparent database encryption for Oracle or uh, Microsoft uh, MS SQL and so on and so on. Uh, with the client we with the client we have uh, a bunch of uh, tools okay and one of them is uh, multi-token. This is our regular tool to test the performance. This is nice because if you build the environment, your network switches, applications, you can test how this uh, the whole environment will perform. Okay, so you can um, run certain tests, for example, signing with RSA to Kilo against your environment, your Luna, your Hybridity, and so on, so on. Okay. So this is this is also uh, nice because uh, you can test uh, before going to production if do you have any bottlenecks or uh, misconfiguration, for example. Okay. By the way, this is also official tool how we as a Thales per, uh, check the performance of of, uh, of the devices. Okay, I think this is we are run of the time. So. Uh, um, yeah, this is, think, uh, I think it's all from my side. No more questions? I don't see, I don't see more, any more questions. Okay. Demo was very interesting. Thanks. <laughs> very short, very short. No, I, I do not want to spend battery with how to create the, the partition because this is the, this is very well described in the documentation. By the way, um, our documentation is available uh, in the public server. This is maybe, yeah. You can go there and read what is in Luna 7, how to deploy it, what are the recommendations, uh, what are the network parameters needed to build, for example, high availability, and so on, and so on. Also, I recommend you to um, go to this NIS paper, draft paper, actually this is draft right now, which explain how to use um, HSM to protect data when you go to the cloud or you achieve it on and you achieve encryption on the on the edge, right? This is very good start point if you don't know how to start with uh, encryption in your environment. Okay, uh, okay. yeah, that's that's all from my side. So, hey, thanks again, Yaroslav. Ačiū visiems klaususiems, tikrai buvo labai įdomu.
Tikiuosi, patiko ir iki kitų susimatymų. Iki. O dar paprašysiu užpildyti, jeigu nepabėgote, neatsijungėte grįžtamai susirišys mums susilaik labai naudingas, tai nepagailėkit minutės. Ačiū labai. Bye, Yaroslav. Bye. See you.